for us to have any quality productions coming out, we actually require professionals in all sectors of production. And that is to mean we must match the kind of training that uh, our students receive in universities, uh, middle level colleges, and any other institution for that matter, so that we are able to match the industry needs vis-a-vis -vis what is being trained. Remember, in a film production, we have uh, directors, we have actors, we do have sound people, editors, and so on. All these are different skills that need to be nurtured to a level where they can be able to complement every aspect of a film production. So indeed, uh, from where I sit, I'm looking at the entire uh, value chain. Aspects of uh, um, the industry that we can be able to fill the gap. First of all, how do we come up with specific curriculum at institutions of higher learning that provide uh, the fill up to all those gaps? Two, how do we match up to the needs of the industry by looking at the best practices emanating from? other countries. I believe that uh, there are countries that are so developed when it comes to filmmaking and we can be able to really uh, borrow a lot through master classes on uh, growing that particular kind of level as far as uh, skills gap is concerned. Research in the field of film is very critical. From the Kenya Film Commission's perspective, we would like to establish what is the economic contribution of the film industry in Kenya. We would also like to know how many graduates are coming out of education institutions and joining the industry. How many are employed? Other than that, what are the uh, training needs for the industry? So in the next quarter, we have earmarked to undertake research to address those four critical areas. Because with the, the findings, as far as training needs are concerned, we'll be able to make informed decisions as to really what we need to focus on as far as training is concerned. Because we're such an emerging industry still, to be honest, and that's quite all right, is that um, we're still only exposed to the producer, director, actor, which because of very visible positions, and you know, one gets famous, uh, another one gets you know critically acclaimed, and another makes money. So depending on what you're into, um, that's what your focus becomes. Now, a set, um, if we're just looking at production and film production, and what is available professionally. It's really wide and broad and it involves so, so many different types of skills. So you have the above the line people, uh, above, uh, yeah, above the line people who are basically uh, strategy, right? So if you have a skill set, even when you're learning, um, whether you're in school for film or whatever is within the creative sector, you could actually work above the line in terms of uh, looking how to develop a project, meaning how you get it from idea. We used to call it from crib, crib to crypt from the time it's born to the time it dies. And so how do you then, um, uh, if someone who thinks about strategy would therefore be looking at you know, marketing, where to sell it, which is basically distribution. And that's a very different skill set that is not about producing. Um, and when I say producing in the sense of running a set and having a set together and doing all of that, it's producing at a higher level, which is a strategic level. Then you have the below the line, which is B and C, and often that's the labor. And that's where you find, you know, um, people kind of get the new production assistant, right, and production coordinator. And then, you know, there's a set dresser, literally somebody who puts everything that you see on, 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 a, on a, we used to say everything, every frame is a lie and every cut is a lie because every frame has been constructed. It's a reality that is constructed for you. It's highly fictional. And so a set dresser actually dresses a set. Um, you have uh, hair and makeup. You know, you could know about the creative sector and maybe you, your skill is in hair and makeup and then you start to work within uh, film production. Uh, there's also uh, accounting. 
at the end of the day, film is a business, and anyone who says otherwise uh, needs to either go back to school or have a sit down with uh, the universe, because film is a business, and we need accountants. We need uh, to every every. Every day, every production day at the end, we need to reconcile all the receipts. We need to reconcile, uh, depending whether someone was a, a day laborer as opposed to someone who's working for the month, you need to ensure that payroll goes through. Like the basic skills of running a business need to be there. Administration. You might not be a creative, but you're really good at administrating. You're good at creating contracts. Legal. Uh, those are also skills there that people don't think about. And now with us really, um, I think as a country, as a nation, and wider world, we're really talking about IP in different ways. So maybe you're just you're a lawyer and your interest is the creative sector and you're focused on IP law. Now, the different IP lawyers in Kenya right now, however, I'd say there's a specialization that's lacking around entertainment, particularly for film. There is music, which I do understand, but particularly for film where uh, a lawyer um, can negotiate uh, revenue for an actor and, uh, you know, they can actually go through that and say, no, you will be able to make this much money over this amount of time. So actually, a lawyer knowing the industry and industry standard, being able to then uh, speak to an actor, speak to uh, you know a, a writer to better inform them and advise them uh, how to sign the contracts. So I think we now need to look at holistically. And at times, by the way, you might go to film school and uh, depending on what your curriculum is, for example, my curriculum had marketing, had PR, uh, had um, marketing PR, we also had sound design and all of that, like that, that was a practical. But you might actually end up being a really good marketer and PR person who understands how to use media to tell a story. And you might end up working for, um, in the medical industry, for example. But that doesn't mean just because you're not working on a film, does not mean that you're not uh, creatively, uh, you know, you're not making use of the degree that you have and the skills that you have and hopefully the talent that you do have. So I think it's really opening up and understanding how the creative and cultural industry sectors, um, how they match up with really across the industry holistically through all the different levels. You might be off uh, selling uh, engineering parts because you're good at sales and understanding what the story is, understanding how to package, you know, all those things you do learn uh, in film school or um, what do you call it? Because I went to a uh, communication and cultural studies school uh, of which film was a practical. So film was uh, what was a tool that I used to uh, critique society. And then other people, uh, they realized, so you actually went through sound, film, TV, and then you picked in the third year your specialization. I picked audiovisual media, film, not TV, which is a little bit different in terms of the longer narrative in the TV series. So at the end of the day, I could have worked in a newspaper too. Um, I could have been a reporter, uh, but just understanding my society and culture. So I think just opening our eyes as to what we're learning and all the critical skills that we're gaining and then the practical skills that we're gaining can be used in a, really a plethora of ways.